Hey everyone, CPO here, and in this video, I'm going to be covering the installation of an upgraded fuel line in my 2019 Golf R. This is an AN style line, AN style fittings, a dash six size, which is a three eighths inch. It's a nylon braided line from EQT. Uh, they haven't actually put this to market yet, but it's coming, trust me. And uh, it's two parts. I have the fuel line that runs from the fuel pump to my ethanol sensor, which is uh, what that quick connect is for right there. And then that little smaller section goes from my ethanol sensor to my MPI fuel rail. Because I don't have my final MPI rail, I'm only going to be installing that big line, which I think is really the challenging one. And I think I have a tip for you that will help you a lot. So the first thing I'm going to do is unplug that fuse for my low pressure fuel pump. Most of you might be a 15 amp. Mine's a 20 amp because it's upgraded with the fuel pump. And then there is one nut here on the side of the engine compartment that is holding the top of this plastic cover that has the fuel line and then that fuel return, like that EVAP line that's right next to it. It's just this one nut. I think that was a 10 millimeter nut. And then there's a little place that you can pry. There's a, a little tab, um, a button. I don't know what you call that thing. Anyway, that is has it attached to the side of the engine compartment. And once you get all of that done, you kind of loosen this thing up and you can pull off that top. And I'll show you that here in a little bit more detail. But now you've got this long piece that you've got to work out and it's like an L shape. And it was kind of a pain in the butt to get out. There is another place you need to pry it apart down on the bottom. And then as you can see here, there's this green clip that captures the two fuel lines running side by side and uh, you need to separate that. So you have to push that open, which will free that. Then you've got this little channel thing on the bottom that captures them, which makes it kind of a pain. So yeah, not gonna lie, that might even been the most difficult part of this was getting this thing out. Uh, but you can see how this goes back together here, uh, that top piece where the nut is on the stud that we removed. And then on the other side is that tab here where it presses into the side of the engine compartment. Then you've got another similar one down on the frame rail that you have to pry apart right there. Then you've got that green thing that clips it in and then you've got this little channel. So all that makes it a pain in the butt, but it will come out, you've just gotta work with it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and separate my fuel line. I already replaced my one-way check valve with a 90 degree quick connect fitting. So you may or may not need to do that. You actually, if you're pulling your whole fuel line out, you don't have to worry about doing this at all, but you're just gonna have to look at it. Sorry, right. um, I can't show you how to remove that, but honestly, I would just cut the rubber line there anyway if I wanted to like clean it up, uh, but you don't need to. You can just pull that whole thing out because we're gonna pull it out from the front. Now on the back side, uh, there is a connector that you're gonna loosen up. It will drain some fuel there, so make sure you have something to capture that. And then, now what I'm gonna do is remove this plastic belly pan and I'm gonna do that so I can get to the frame rail itself and I'll show you why. And um, unfortunately the way my lift is, it has the one side captured so I can't pull it completely off. So I have to kind of fold it down. So you should probably pull yours off if you can get to it easily. All right, so there is this little channel uh, plastic piece that holds the uh, fuel lines in place. You can go ahead and remove that right there. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm looking to see like how this thing is all tied together. And as it turns out, those two lines that run side by side through the frame rail are connected. They're actually wrapped up in like a black rubber, uh, I'm gonna say tape for lack of another word, but they are, they are connected in the middle uh, likely to keep them from rattling from the factory. So all the people who have tried to just pull out the fuel line from one end or the other and had a hard time pulling on it, it's because these things are connected uh, in the middle. So I used a small razor uh, and I used a pair of needle nose pliers to pull out. Uh, you can see here I'm pulling out little pieces of foam tape and then uh, I also used a long skinny screwdriver to sort of separate those. But I spent a little extra time getting that separated and that's the only place where they seem to be connected was right there and thankfully there was a hole in the frame rail where I could get to it. So I'm just sort of pulling and making sure that I can get that, um, that fuel line that I wanna remove freed up. And I think that that's gonna make things a lot easier. 
Now right on the side of the fuel tank, that fuel line is clipped in on a little bracket. So you can just unclip that, just reach your hand up along the side. Now we're gonna go up to the top of the, of the inside where the low pressure fuel pump is. This is underneath the passenger side of the rear seat. So if you aren't familiar with this area, I did a low pressure fuel pump install video, which sort of gets you to this point. But all I'm gonna do right here is just remove this fuel line. Just, it's a squeeze connector. You squeeze it and then pull up. Notice I didn't lose uh, any fuel here really because I'd already drained it from the bottom and it's been sitting long enough that all the pressure has been relieved. So I'm just gonna cut the end of this off and then I'm gonna use the existing fuel line to drag this new braided line down through so that I can get it run through that channel. So a little bit of tape here and then I'm just using my right hand to sort of pull and work its way down while I use my left hand to guide the new fuel line through. And it took me a little while to sort of find that sweet spot where it would go through nice and easy, but you'll find it, keep trying different angles. And then once it goes through, it should be able to go all the way through. And I wouldn't connect your fuel line to the low pressure side just yet, because you can see how it's gonna get all unwound and you don't want to twist it up. And yeah, we pull that through and you'll notice this end is the end with the 90 degree quick connect. That's what's gonna uh, press on to the low pressure fuel pump. So make sure that that uh, clips in solidly and you will hear it click in. And then in fact, I like to give it a little bit of a tug just to make sure it's really on there good and tight. And then once we've done that, we're actually done up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together and um, shouldn't need to worry about this stuff anymore. Like I said, I did do a video on this low pressure fuel pump install. So all of this stuff that you're seeing me mess with uh, has been covered in a different video already. All right, back underneath. Now here's the tip I have for you. Instead of trying to drag that new fuel line all the way through with the old fuel line, I'm gonna drag string. I have some like heavy duty construction string. You can use kite string, whatever. I'm just taping it to that fuel line and then I'm going to pull the fuel line from the engine compartment and it's gonna pull that string with it. And then I'll end up with string in that place. The reason I'm using string instead of the fuel line and just pulling it through directly is because it is such a tight fit. It's so easy to get hung up on things. And it's also so easy to get it separated if you're just trying to tape the two lines together. Uh, I've seen many videos where people have tried that and it just doesn't work out and they end up having to do something different anyway. So. I'm starting with something different. I'm pulling string through, uh, and, and basically what I did is I went to the front and I'm just pulling up from the front until the string comes through. And just like that, now I have string hanging out both ends of that fuel rail. Now uh, that I have this existing fuel line out, you can see that rubber, how it was wrapped around there and how to cut and pull that off. So that's what's holding those two lines together. Back to the new fuel line, I'm going to take the string that's hanging out of the fuel rail on the back side and I'm going to attach it to the fuel line and I'm doing it with this sort of a new style where I make a loop, wrap it around, shove the tail through the loop and then pull it tight. What I like about this knot, and I don't know the name for this knot unfortunately, the harder you pull the tighter it gets. So uh, it should hold nice and easily and it's very low profile because the fitting, that dash six size fitting is barely gonna fit through the fuel rail anyway. So we don't want a lot of extra bulk. So I'm actually using masking tape here because it's nice and thin and the tape is not to hold the string to the fuel line. That's already done with the string itself. The tape is just to help guide the line through the channel of the frame. Uh, so it doesn't get hung up on stuff. See how it's got a nice little point to it. And it also keeps crud from getting inside that fuel line. So I go back to the front and I just pull through and it might get stuck on the fuel rail as it's trying to come out uh, right into the engine compartment. You can just reach down there and, and, uh, and feel it and uh, guide it through that small hole there. Uh, but it went through fairly easy as you can see for me. Now uh, I'm gonna remove that string so it's pretty easy to take off. You can just loosen up uh, that uh, little tail loop there and then pull the tail through and it should just come right apart for you. So there we go. Now I can go back underneath the car and make sure that I get it run all the way without any kinks 
or twists or anything like that. Now there is some excess fuel line. You can have that excess either be inside the engine compartment, which is what I'm doing, or you can have that excess end up either up on side of the fuel tank there or on top where the, uh, the connection to the low pressure fuel pump is. But either way, you're gonna end up with some excess. I believe I did. I pushed it up to the front and I'll deal with that later. Now for this little channel guide here, I did cut out the center clips. There's some, some spring wings there. You can see it on the left side there. I removed those from the middle so that that dash six size line will fit nicely uh, right there in that middle channel. And that did work out fairly well. You can also use a zip tie if you want to tidy things up and make sure everything is held solid. I think if I recall correctly, I did use a zip tie to make sure that that line was was held in tight. I didn't want it rubbing and generating, you know, a wear area. So now that you've got that done, you can put that belly pan back together. And um, yeah, we're done down there. Now getting this elbow shaped plastic cover back in is also a pain in the butt. I didn't show this on film. I forgot to get video of it, but I did cut that little section uh, that was enclosed at the end that points backwards. I did sort of uh, cut that apart so that it wasn't quite so restrictive. And then, yeah, that's really all I did actually. And then I just worked it through and was patient and you know got my fuel line run where I wanted to and then uh, eventually got it pressed back into the side of the engine compartment there. And once you do that, then you can put that top piece on and I didn't really make any modifications to that top piece. You'll just have to look at it and see if there's anything you need to do, but I didn't really make any modifications to it. It just worked out fine. And then I was able to put that one nut back on and uh, hold it all together. Now for my fuel line, I did run it underneath and around the backside of that coolant reservoir just to keep it out of the way. And then now what I'm doing is removing that last little section of fuel line uh, the factory fuel line that I had that went into my ethanol sensor. And I'm just removing that uh, quick connect plastic piece there uh, from the previous fuel line from the ethanol sensor. And I'm just gonna plug this fuel line straight into there, kind of. Um, so I am putting the quick connect fitting on this line now that I've got it run through. It would have not fit through the frame rail uh, if I had this end on there. That's why I didn't put it on beforehand. But uh, before I plug it into the ethanol sensor, I want to purge the fuel out. So put the fuse back in, shove the old fuel line uh, just inside there, just to give it a, a place to evacuate, wrapped it up with a little towel and put it into a little bucket. And then literally I just went over and cranked the car uh, for a couple of seconds and uh, that essentially turned on the low pressure fuel pump to start pumping fuel and it just pumped a few cups of ethanol into the uh, bucket. And then what that did is made sure that I didn't have anything somehow trapped in that line, you know, dirt or crud that's gonna go straight into my MPI injectors because I don't have any other uh, fuel filter in line. So uh, it was a pain in the butt to get this onto the ethanol sensor. The quick net was really tight, even lubricated with a little bit of fuel. It just did not want to go in. There's two O-rings. It was a super tight fit. So I went ahead and disconnected it from the fuel line and then put it onto the ethanol sensor directly because I could sort of get a better handle on it uh, outside of the vehicle. And then I reattached the fuel line to that. So that's sort of why I ended up doing that. I don't know if all of them are gonna be that tight, but it was a really tight fit, which isn't a bad thing because it definitely doesn't leak, but it, it did not go on nearly as easy as the Dorman Quick Connects that I had on there before. And so now I'm just tidying up that fuel line. I'm gonna use some zip ties to sort of lock it into place. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the end of this video. Unfortunately, I, I can't do the other side, like I said, because I don't have my final MPI kit, but this is the hard part anyway. And here's a look at the factory fuel line on the bottom compared to the dash six size fuel line that we just put in there. Quite a bit more flow. And in fact, I gained, I think 10 PSI uh, just in changing the fuel line alone. So I hope you found this useful. I hope you like the tip about the string. I think it's way easier than trying to do it the way I've seen other people do it. So give it a try if you're gonna tackle this. Let me know how it worked out for you. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.